great power of Jesus. Have you ever wondered what would happen if the power of Jesus had been unleashed in its entirety? Jesus could have annihilated all of humanity if he wanted to. On the night he was betrayed, while Roman soldiers were arresting him, one of his followers drew his sword. Sword, and in an instant of fury, he cut off the ear of a guard. Jesus, with a firm and penetrating look, stopped Peter and said to him, Put away your sword, because all those who take the sword to the sword will perish. Do you think that I could not beg my father that he would put at my disposal more than two selections of angels to take into account? A Roman legion was made up of 6,000 soldiers. Jesus had at his disposal more than 72,000 angels to wipe out all of humanity. To understand the magnitude of this, imagine that a single angel in a single night can take 185,000 lives. This is all in mythologies. Follow us and comment for more. But I had it's, it's two about that video that intrigued me, honestly. Um, the first thing that intrigued me, I'm going to say the best part for last, but the, uh, so the, it's actually the second thing that intrigued me. The second thing that intrigued me was the, was the reference to the 185,000 that were killed by an angel. This is in reference to when supposedly... Um, during the during the time frame, the Assyrian Sennacherib was invading northern Egypt and had taken all of northern e northern e northern Egypt northern Israel had taken all of northern Israel except for the city of Jerusalem. And when he was sieging the city of Jerusalem, supposedly according to the Bible, Hezekiah prayed or sacrificed or whatever, and that angel went out and killed like one hundred eighty five thousand troops. It's according to the story. Yeah. Here's the problem. At no time in frame, no time at no time frame, and Jerusalem has been dug up, expanded, dug up, expanded. At no time frame was there ever a mass grave of 185,000 soldiers dead. At no time frame were there, uh, if that had happened, there would be uh, collections of shields and pottery and swords, or there will be a lot, or there'll be something left over in the archaeological record that would demonstrate that 185,000 troops, Assyrian troops, you can't just say troops, Assyrian troops had died at that time frame. But there's actually zero archaeological evidence that an angel killed 185,000 Assyrian troops in Jerusalem outside the old walls, which would put that inside the city, the current modern day city. Never any evidence of that. But what do we have evidence of? We have evidence if you were to look at the inscriptions that are written in uh, Nineveh, where Sennacherib talks about the fact that Hezekiah paid him a bribe. And actually in your Bible, it still says that Hezekiah gave him some money. That he basically bought his way out of being conquered. And that is the real story of what happened with 185,000. There was no angel that killed 185,000. Unless you want to say the angel of gold. <laughs> Midas came walking around. Now here's the other part that intrigued me that caught my attention on this video because right when I was about to ignore this video, it caught my attention when he said, Jesus said, do you not think I could beg my father to give me these angels to fight these Romans to do whatever in, in, in the Bible that I was given when I was 16 years old uh, I had many points where I put uh, XT in the, in the book it was noted with XT and, the reason, and I don't have this Bible of course but the reason why I put XT next to certain verses because those were ex-Trinitarian ex verses. The idea that Jesus would say that I could beg my father to give me these troops is an ex-Trinity mindset. It's a non-Trinitarian mindset. If Jesus was God in the flesh, why would he or who would the hell is he begging? Why would he be begging? If Jesus is God, he would not have to beg his father for anything. He would merely just command the angels if he was God. You see, most people don't understand 
that the concept of the Trinity is you won't find it in the Bible as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are one. You won't find that. The Bible won't lead you there. But it's through doctrine over a gradual period of time, roughly almost 300 years of time, did the idea of the Trinity become the orthodoxy, become the doctrine, become the belief. And for as much as Protestants don't like Catholics, your idea of Trinitarian belief comes from the Catholics. You accept that part. But from roughly about first century to third century, you had most the majority of the people who followed this religion were not Trinitarians. Most were Gnostics or some other variation of Christianity, Marcians, all kinds of different variations of Christianity at that time, much like today. You didn't get to the Trinity being the focal point, being the main thing until you get to the Council of Nicaea. And that is because Constantine was backing the Orthodox Christians. So in the Council of Nicaea, the main concern there was the Trinity. It was an argument that was going on between Arius and Athanasius, the two bishops down in Alexandria, Egypt, and that needed to be settled. And so the Trinity won. And that's why the Nicene Creed is about is more about the Trinity than anything else. But it is when people take, oh, me and my father are one. But then later on in John, Jesus said, me and the disciples, he tells the disciples that you and I are one in the same verbiage, the same language, the same wording is used to describe Jesus and God as one. So is the disciples and God also one? Is God in itself a polythe, a polytheist, a poly, I'm going to make up a word, a poly being. I don't know. I don't think that's a word, but, uh, there are many parts of the Bible where you don't, where you see that there is a separation between God and Jesus. In this instance, in Matthew, I guess, I'm guessing he's using the Matthew version, that there is the separation between this God and Jesus, that Jesus would have to beg him. I, if I have something, some power within myself to do something, I don't have to beg myself to do it. I just do it, right? Okay, I thought we were on the same page. But what do you guys think? And always remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.